So let me do the multiple choice. Yeah. So this is due uh, one week from yesterday, due November 14th. And as with the other ones before, you can use lay passes. Uh, so without further ado, let me start. Um, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll just try to go through it efficiently. Um, yeah, and I got my calculator if I need it. You know, rather than this, I think I would prefer to... Uh, so you are allowed to use Wolfram Alpha, and uh, I recommend using Wolfram Alpha. It takes care of uh, a lot of different uh, numerical calculations, like looking at constants. So, all right, let me start. So, yeah, it's a rotation question. So, which correctly defines or describes torque. A given amount of force can produce, that's not right. Torque is the, um, the displacement cross product with the force. So, if displacement changes, the torque will change. Torque is not necessary to ma maintain an angular velocity. It's the, this is the rotational version of the similar statement to, for force and velocity. Torque integrity, uh, no. I think there might be context where people might talk about that, but not ours. Torque is necessary, yeah. So this is the rotational version of Newton's second law, uh, F is equal to MA. Uh, torque is equal to I alpha. Uh, solid disk and a ring are rolling with the disk velocity towards an incline. Both uh, are rolling without sleeping, okay. so. Uh, yeah, so all of the kinetic energy that's at the bottom, both the rotational and translational, will turn into the potential energy at the top, which will offer... Ah, okay, so it's a question of which one has greater kinetic energy. And I will tell you the ring actually has greater kinetic energy because its rotation inertia is greater. So if they are moving, rolling at the same speed, uh, they have the same translational kinetic energy, but this will have greater rotational energy. So the ring will end up to the higher height. We, yeah, since it's larger rotational inertia, which means it has larger rotational kinetic energy initially. So yeah. it's a kind of principle I use when I use, write multiple choice answers. The correct answers, they sound as wrong as I can make them. The wrong answers, they sound as correct as I can make them. I think, yeah, the rest. Like this is a wrong choice, but I tried to make them sound right. <laughs> okay, question three. Um, which of the following also have the smallest rotation inertia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what I will tell you is, so, so here, let me answer it. Um, solid uniform sphere, thin circular, spherical shell, uh, thin rod of length. So, if I will have mass or center of mass, this is the correct answer. But what I will tell you is don't be a hero. Just to look it up. It's open book. Uh, you are allowed to use your textbook. So um, don't try to memorize rotation inertia formula. Just to look it up. It uh, should be in chapter 10, section 10.5. Um, there's a whole table of rotational inertias. Just to look it up. <laughs> Uh, wait, what is calculating? Wait, what? Yeah, sorry, wrong. 10.4, moment of inertia or rotation inertia. There's a whole table of these. Um, so, um, so I have the formula for, so I think the one thing you gotta work out is, I think comparing these is relatively easy. Solid sphere, you know, two over five, uh, Cauchel, two over three, that's greater. Um, uh, thin circular loop. That's uh, that's that mr squared or um, yeah mr squared. Uh, now the thing that's challenging to compare is the thin rod because they give you this formula and you have to plug in l equals two r. So it's a four r squared over twelve. Four over twelve is one third, and one third is. Um, Oh, one third is smaller than this. Yeah, this is a challenging question. I remember struggling with it before. All right, let me go faster. Uh, when a helicopter takes off by spinning its wings, um, reaction torque, right? 
it's a Newton's third law question basically. Um, how does a Chinova uh, with the two blades? Um, it's uh, um, they have yeah spin in opposite directions so that the net torque is zero. Uh, it uh, so yeah. I gotta go faster. A disk of some mass and radius with a small mass is attached at the okay. I'm gonna skip and come back to it later when I have time. Consider each situation described below, angular momentum, not concerned, okay. For that to happen, there must be some external torque. So let's look for it. Uh, this is, sounds like a, on someone there's no external torque, so that's probably not it. Solar system, sent, so um, there shouldn't be external torque. Uh, and even this, because gravity is a central force, um, it, that's kind of where new, uh, the Kepler second law comes from. And yeah, this. The gravity uh, due to, um, on, on the wheel actually causes torque. And so, uh, <laughs> so you need to have seen the whole precision lecture to get it. But this setup, angular momentum isn't concerned. It's changing at some predictable rate. Um, oh, yeah. Claims. Uh, Choose the statement that most correctly describes the physics of the situation. Okay. Um, so uh, there was a demo in lecture, which uh, you are meant to have seen, uh, like carpenter climbing up, this is slips out. And what it is that uh, the amount of normal force increases as they climb up. So the friction force has to increase. And at some point it might slip. So under carpenter, when the wall pushes the ladder with a greater force than the, yeah, that's it. Uh, at, then the normal force from the wall is greater than the friction that will balance out. That was covered in the lecture. And, uh, oh, yeah, let me skip that and come back to that because <laughs> that's a longer question. For an accurate description of gravity, it is important to think uh, drop to masses, uh, most force, and the gravitation. Okay. Gravitation acceleration due to rate is known. Um, Forces, weight of the object most star. Guess it is. Uh, let me check the other two questions. Gravity force on 10 kilogram mass due to not, it's not equal. Yeah. 10 pines. Okay, this sounds more correct than that. Um, I'm not quite sure what this is. Maybe it's uh, getting at, uh, you know, the there's also mass, so maybe that's why. <laughs> this statement definitely sounds correct without any caveat. For something to two Earth is 10 times the gravity for one kilometer to two Earth. At the same location anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay, choose uh, gravity. The incorrect statement by is in opposite direction from the ground. On the apple by the Earth. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's the Newton's third law. Wait, so that's the correct statement, so not the answer. Acceleration of the apple. Ah, okay, that's uh, uh, incorrect. The forces are the same, Newton's third law, but the acceleration is different. Uh, Newton's second law, because their masses are different. Yeah, I think the rest is correct. Okay, how much time do I have left? Um, so I have um, two minutes. Um, <laughs> So I think this one is going to take longer. Uh, this one, so doing it properly will take a lot of time. But I can actually answer this a lot more quickly by using dimensional analysis. So force should come in units of mass times acceleration. So I can rule out this. I can rule out this. OK, this might have correct units. Um, this I can rule out as well, the units are wrong. So I'm choosing between the first and the third choice here. And I guess the thing, so you know, if you make a guess at this point, it's a 50 50 guess. Uh, what will help me choose the intuition that tells me that this is the correct answer is what happens as H gets smaller. My intuition tells me that, well, the force required to make it roll over, it should be smaller as H gets smaller. And here, it looks like it'll be bigger. That doesn't sound right. But here, I can imagine as H goes to zero, uh, this force going to zero. So yeah, I think that's how this question was meant to be done. Because if you have to do a whole standard strategy, it's going to take you too long. 
uh, definitely too long for this <laughs> multiple choice. And with the less than a minute left, you know. Oh, wait, this is not a calculation question. I could have done this. Uh, the most correctly, what happens? Okay, rotation rate increases to conserve angular momentum. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, sorry. It, the numbers scared me when it shouldn't have. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> the gradual, it was, yeah, because this will decrease the, the rotational inertia of the whole setup. And uh, qualitatively, this is what you should have. Okay. All right. Yeah. So this, uh, um, you know, as you are working through it, uh, let's hope I got all ten questions right. But uh, yeah, I guess there's a lot of challenging questions here. Um, oh, I, I think I know why uh, partly because uh, so in this the easier questions tend to, to come from my physics ten class, <laughs> and uh, when you get to rotation, that's the kind of topics that's uh, um, difficult to cover conceptually. So most of the questions I have here are physics for a questions. So um, so they tend to be harder. So do your best. You get three attempts because the ten minutes really isn't a lot of time for these questions. Yeah, and in any case, it's weighted for 0% of your scores anyway. So, <laughs> do your best.